Hey, everybody. Jeff here from The Embroidery Nerd. Um, today, I am not joined by Mr. Justin Armenti. He had a few other things that he needed to do, and so I am going to be tackling this one on my own. So today we are doing a digitizing 911, and since I am on my own and I have to push all the buttons, <laughs> there we go. We got that up. Um, and so I had a file that was submitted, and I'm going to start sharing my screen here, and I'll go ahead and show it to you guys, and then we'll jump in. Now, I will tell you that I am doing this on a software that I don't use very much at all. So... Um, it is a native uh, Ricoma Chroma software uh, and Ricoma Chroma file. And this is the file that was sent to me. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to dissect it a little bit. We're going to look at the issues that it was causing. And I'm going to talk about the changes that I would make to this file myself um, and did make so that uh, it would run a little better and look a little bit cleaner. So the first thing I'm going to do before I get too far here is I'm double checking the comments. I want to make sure that I'm in the right area. If you are there, let me know you're there. And please let me know you, if you can hear me or not. I want to make sure everything looks like it's on, but, you know, sometimes I mess up. <laughs> okay, so let me grab this window right here. And I'm going to bring this over. And this is the sew out that was sent to me. Um, the image of the sew out, I guess. And so I can see that there are some error, you know, some issues in the text. Uh, the fill is, I mean, it's different than how I would do it. And I'm going to go ahead and go into how I would do it and how I would change it. And um, we'll just jump right in here. So I can go ahead and close that. So hopefully I don't need to bring it back up because I closed the window. And we have Michael here letting me know that I'm loud and clear. Thank you for joining me today. So awesome. And we have Sedona as well. Hello from... Coleman, Florida. Awesome. I know it's pretty late over there, so glad you decided to hang out with me. Um, so this is the file that was sent to me. We can take a look here. We It's comprised of, right now, it's comprised of three complex fills um, and the text. So looking at the density settings on the fills, I'll be 100% honest with you guys. A, a, dense, a standard 0.4 density is uh, fairly close to what you would use on. Like, I'd, I'd run that on a shirt. Um, but when I start getting onto hats, I tend to increase my density just a little bit because coverage can be an issue. And we saw that in the uh, first image, which I shouldn't have closed, but <laughs> here we are now. But you can, see, you can see a little bit of the hat showing through. So I do like to increase that just a little bit. Um, I did make more changes to it because it's fairly, to me, it's fairly flat. But initially, the very first thing that I did uh, when I looked at this is I, I would change that to a 0.35. So I'm going down mm, a little bit, but not a ton. Um, I mean, I'm increasing my density a little bit, but not a ton. But it's going to help with some of that coverage. And then the rest of that, we would look at underlay to take care of. So um I'm double checking on all the comments. We've got Trish joining us from Australia. Hello. So the next issue that I saw was the text. Um, and it had something I like to call it a dancing baseline. Um, I can't remember where I heard that term first, but it's uh, what I use to describe it. And if we bring a guideline in here, there we go. And we line it up across the bottom here and we'll zoom in and pan over. So spacebar gives you the pan ability and... I'm scrolling in with my mouse wheel. I'm going to try and make sure I tell you guys all of my shortcuts, but this isn't, you know, I, I, I use lots of different softwares. You can make changes in any software and you can make something that looks great in any software. So uh, this happens to be a native file and I prefer to work with native files when I can. So if we zoom in here, what you can see is that these needle penetrations are really, really close to those needle penetrations. Basically, anywhere that we have an open-ended satin, it's going to push. Um, and wherever we have the side of a satin, when it comes to the baseline, it's going to pull in a little bit. So what we saw in the other picture, there was a lot of push and pull going on that, that needs to be addressed in the text before it's even sewn out. Um, the other issue was I really shouldn't have closed it. So you guys can throw popcorn at me, <laughs> at me later for closing it. But... Underlay coverage was also a little bit of an issue, and we'll go over those settings here just a little bit as well. So the first thing that we need to address here 
is our software. This is sent to sew from left to right. Now we don't want it to sew from left to right. It is going on a hat and hats need to sew. Typically, I've seen two schools of thought on this is bottom up and center out. And I've also seen top down and center out, but pretty much the one consistent thing that I've never heard anybody argue against is that it needs to go center out because you're laying down stitches on top of the seam and then you're pressing it out as you go from the center. So if you start on the left side and you run it to the right side, what you're going to get, and I, <laughs> you'll definitely get it, is you'll get this little wave that'll start build, building and curling up as you're pushing it across that, that center seam. And when you get to a certain point, that point, that wave's going to crash over and it's actually going to fold into the hat and you'll sew a fold in your hat. And I know this because I don't have it. <laughs> I had a hat. I ended up cutting it out, but I had a hat. It was one of the very first ones I did that I had that exact problem with. It created a wave, it folded, and I stitched that fold down. So what we need to make sure that we're doing is we're doing center right, center left. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's just the order that it's going to sew out here first. And they have this sewing from top down. So that wouldn't be something that I would necessarily immediately um, address, but since we are going to be working on this file, I'm going to go from the bottom up because that is what I typically do when I do it. So let's run the slow redraw here and we're going to go through. And of course it's sewing the top. It kind of, yeah. So is the middle piece. And then it comes down, does the bottom leaf. And now it's doing a text and it starts on the N and it moves to uh, the P and then it's going to start again on the S and it's going to move on over to the E and then it's gonna finish up and it'll beep a couple of times and fingers crossed, it looks great. So <laughs> the, the couple things that we need to address on this um, and I'm gonna mute my mic for one second here. Let's go like that, there we go. Wrong file up, we got that fixed. I don't want to uh, cough in your guys' ears and I'm sorry about popping up that other file. Um, so let's go ahead and move on here. So we have our uh, our text that's now sewing center out, but the big issue of this text that I can see is that the baseline is all lined up across the bottom, and it's gonna it's gonna push out, and there's not enough push compensation. Basically, the next thing I, I looked at here when I pulled up this file initially is um, we need to measure our narrow columns. So our narrow stitches, I like to go. Uh, I don't like to go below a millimeter on a hat, and I really like to keep that up above a millimeter as we can. And this goes down to 0.8. So that's gonna that's another issue that we're gonna need to solve. We need to get that up closer to 0.1, maybe 1.2, so that we can actually get the coverage on there and we'll move from there. So let's back that up just a little bit. We'll pull this over. We also have some of these weird jump stitches in there. Those should convert to trims when we export the file out. I like to manually set my trim. So let's go into here and we'll go into the node edit and we'll go into the text. So this was one of the issues that I initially ran into um, when I was first working on this file. So just so you guys know, I fixed it once. <laughs> I've got a sew out sitting over there. We're gonna fix it again. Um, but pretty much is I can't go into node edit on these letters uh, when it's in text. And if I do go into the text mode, we get some of the modifiers here. You know, I can right click on it. It's going to let me break up text. I can right click on the letter again. It's going to let me break up text. I can change the text, which I don't really want to do. So let's go ahead and break that out. And that's where we are. So the first thing that I, I would look at here is we're going to go into our push and I'll pull. Now you can see that there's no push, push compensation. There's no pull compensation. So and I'm going to bring up a comment here. Ramona says, it looks like the letters were squished to fit and then stretched to make taller. And that is highly possible. Um, I, I didn't look at that initially, but that is very, very possible. And we have Marla, hello from Indiana. So I went in here and back to the push and pull compensation. I can get so dis so distracted. But when I do pull comp compensation, I like to do absolute pull comp compensation. I don't like to do a percentage base. That's just me. You could do either or, but I like to do absolute. And generally I start out about a point two on my pull compensation. That's going to bump it out just a little bit. You can see that our letters are actually touching. Um, when we sew, they're going to pull in just a little bit. It's going to look a little bit cleaner. Um, now 
I did experiment with push compensation. And this I found very, very interesting. And it was something that actually made this a whole lot harder when I did this is if I go into the 0.4 push compensation like I normally would, there's an interesting effect that happens inside of the text that, that just, it really, I mean, it caught me off guard. I was not expecting it. You can see it here up on the apostrophe and you can see it a little bit in the S. And if we move over here, you can see it in the N or the, the other R, I guess, right there. And again, in the N over here, it's actually adding push co push compensation in areas that I don't want it to. I don't want that little bit of a gap there. It may close, it may not, but it's not going to look like a full letter as it goes all the way through. So that was something that really kind of surprised me. And it changed the way I approached the text. So let's go back into our push and pull compensation. And I'm going to get rid of the absolute push compensation so that we don't have it pushing in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the letters, which I really found odd. So we need to still address that push compensation because if we allow it to stay like this, it's not going to line up properly. And we need to make sure that we're accounting for that push as much as we can as we go along. So I'm going to grab a comment here from Frank. Hello, Frank. How's it going? I'm by myself and <laughs> I'm making it work. We'll see. So the other thing too, and I'll we'll go through all of the settings here. Um, when we get to underlay, it's got a parallel underlay, which in this software is a zigzag. Um, on these narrow columns, because they are now roughly around a millimeter, I would not use a parallel underlay. I would use a centerline underlay. And my stitch length and my run stitch length, I would change those both to 1.5 based off of the fabric that I'm working on. So those are changes that I make. Um, to make sure that when I'm running it on a hat, I'm not going to have the problem of the underlay popping outside of the stitches because this software, it doesn't have variable and let's go out of the, let me hit all the buttons. We'll see which one hat goes first. So it doesn't have variable stitch length as it comes into these corners. So we need to make sure that we bump that stitch length a little. We need to put it a little bit shorter because as we go around those curves, it's like, placing dots on a board, as we move around those curves, it's going to have more of a, a chance of popping out underneath. So I'm going to grab another comment. I'm grabbing them as they come in. Um, Martin Campbell, I'm here. So we've got one of the Campbells. We'll see if the other one's here too. Um, <laughs> so let's go ahead and turn back on our 3D view. Now, initially, you go in here and you can break up text. And this is another thing that really kind of surprised me again when I did this is that now if we go in here to like the letter N, which I would typically digitize as two satins, I've got a run, a satin, a run, a satin, and a run, and another satin. So I've got three satins in a run for that letter. The W, which is next here is one run and one, two, three, four satins. And I would do that as one solid satin, to be honest with you. Um, and the, let's go ahead and we're, we'll break apart these groups because we have to ungroup them to be able to select each individual component. So what it looks like it did, and I'm no pro on this, is it looks like it took a run stitch, uh, this the underlay that was there, and it assigned it as a stitch when I broke it apart. Our satin, again, it did a short section of that. It did a run down to the bottom and it did another satin coming back up to the top. So it looks like where it decided to break that up and all of the pathing that it did internally, when I broke apart the letters, it broke apart that pathing itself. And so we're in, we end up with a lot of objects and now it's basically going through and changing the values of every single object. So if we go in here to this run stitch here, I said I wanted to run a 1.5 millimeter under or underlay, center run underlay. So this would be a travel stitch that also needs to be 1.5 millimeter. So now we're going through, we have to break apart all of the letters and um, change all of the values and then regroup all of the letters. So that honestly is a lot of work. Um, and it's a lot faster to actually re-digitize all of it. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to group 
all of the letters together. So they're in one pile. And then we're going to redigitize this lettering based off of the values that I want to assign to the satin stitches. So we've added the pull compensation here. And I can, um, <laughs> we added the pull compensation. So I can digitize right on top of those. And then I won't need to add pull compensation to my letters because it's already been added. It's, it'll be accounted for by the object I'm drawing. So um, we have Bevy Jean. Hello to you. Sorry, late to the class. Not a problem. I'm glad you're here. And we have Martin Campbell. In all my years in the graphics industry, one thing that has always been a no-no was having a horizontal stroke that is thicker than the vertical. So I'll be honest with you. I have never paid attention but I could see it and it's not something that I do. So, um, but this was how they sent it in and we want to make sure that we just get it as a better running file for them. So taking a look at that, we need to now plot kind of how we're going to move. And I will go back in here and I'm going to undo. Let's, let's undo a little bit here and we'll get back to the push compensation that we were talking about a little bit earlier. So we'll bring that back. We now have the text there. So we'll go into our push compensation. And I set that at a 0.4 for a hat. So basically what I'm doing here is now I've dropped, I'm, I've moved it up a little bit so I can drop a guideline. And now that I have that guideline, I can manually digitize that push compensation in on the letters as we go. So I'll go ahead and blow that back away. And actually, eh, yeah, I'll bring it back. <laughs> we're trying to make up my mind here. Um, so that's what we're gonna stick with. So. Now I need to determine, okay, what's the direction that we're going to sew? So we can sew from the left or from the N over to the left or the S over to the right. So I opted to sew from the N to the left. And um, I, there's, a, there's a little bit of a unique problem that you can run into here. If you have a lot of flagging on your machine when you're dropping a needle directly on the seam is you're going to get deviation. So I have a hat here. We'll hold up this hat and I'll make myself just a little bit bigger. Hey, so basically what that is, is when the needle comes down, it's gonna push on the hat. And that deviation right there, it may not seem like a lot, but when you start getting up here closer to the brim, when that needle comes in and the fabric bends, it actually bends the needle. And when it bends that needle, it's gonna make the needle strike the needle plate and you're gonna break the needle. And so to avoid that, there's a couple different things we can do. You can hold, if we just digitize straight from the end, you can hold that needle down with your finger and I'm trying to pick the right, there we go. You can hold that uh, fabric down with your finger or not your finger, don't ever use your finger. Chopsticks, pencil, pen, something that the needle, you don't mind if it goes through so it doesn't go through your finger. <laughs> so not your finger, whatever you do, not your finger. Or we can try and sew a little bit off to the side of that and then move in um, as we go. So um, we'll start digitizing here and I'm gonna add a second and a third color here down to the bottom so that we can do that. I've changed in the software from left click to right, right click to left click. So if you have the software, you haven't made any changes, you have to right click to select a color. I don't like that. so. I changed it to <laughs> left click. And we have Ramona, finger prick stick, and you should have put the little TM there because that was one of the more clever things uh, I've read in a while. Um, so definitely, definitely put that there. So, oh, and I brought it back up. There we go. And I'm gonna take back these couple of little stitches. So what I'll do here is I'll, I'll set the tie in right about here. There's a good amount of heft in those between those two set uh, intersecting satins that I believe I can hide that object in there. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to come down, up, there. I'm going to come over to the R and let's come in just a little bit here. I'll come up and basically come down to about right there. We're going to set our start there. We're going to set our stop off to the right. And now we're going to go in and we're going to adjust these settings here. I want that to be 1.5. Um, and now it'll apply. I should have adjusted my settings first. Huh. There we go, 1.5. So I've set that at 1.5. You can see how it's kind of it kind of steps around there. And now we're going to do a satin stitch. So let's let's change the um, 
settings. There we go. We'll change the settings uh, before we start. So I want them to be at a 0.35 because that's the density I found has worked the best. I've got my pull compensation at absolute. I like to run my pull compensation at a 0.2. Um, more than likely, we'll take that off altogether because we've already done that. We've got our column. I'm not going to mess with any of those values. General, blend, no. Commands, no. Let's take a look at our underlay. Our underlay, we want it to be a center line because it is very, very narrow. My stitch length is going to be a 1.5, and my run stitch length is going to be a 1.5 as well because I want to make sure when it's traveling, it's taking short, uh, short steps too. So if you have a, you can set your underlay at a 1.5 stitch length, but when it travels, like it does, let's say it comes down, I'll stop using my fingers. It comes down here and it does a center line under what lay up and then it runs back down here to start the satin on that end. Those travel stitches can be longer and you want to make sure that you're keeping those short as well. So um, here we go, Ramona, oh wait, I'm tired. It's the no finger prick stick TM, there you go. And Martin, nothing like an X-ray showing a needle broke off in a finger joint. Yep, I don't like to see those. Um, just as much as everybody else, I think. And there we go. So let's go ahead and come back in here. I am going to use this as a template. So I will, I wonder, let's see if I can just convert to, nope. All right. It was worth a shot. It didn't work. We'll, we'll keep moving on here. So now I'm going to grab the classic satin tool, which is available in all levels of the software. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just kind of go off needle penetration, needle penetration. I'm going to come up there, down there, and we're going to come around the top here. And I'm just going to come in just a little bit. And I want my start point to be there. I want my finish point to be there. So now I've got that in there. And you can see how it's added that, that pull compensation. It went a little bit wider. So we're going to take that out all together because I already added the pull compensation on the lettering underneath and I just want to follow those stitch penetrations. I don't want to add pull compensation on top of them. So we'll grab our, we'll grab our classic satin tool again and we'll go into push and pull and we'll take that out as well. So now it'll apply to everything. So there's one thing I forgot to do here. We'll come back and do it really quick. Quick is on this run stitch here. I want to go into commands. I want to make sure that it ties in with, it can be a triangle or a basic. The tie-in I'm a little less um, concerned with than the tie-out, but I do wanna make sure that I am setting my tie-in points so that we can see that little tie-in and I'm gonna set my trims manually as well. So let's go ahead and grab here and now we can move up our satin here and there and come up and we're gonna cut it just a little bit short. I'll hit enter. I want it to start here and I want it to, it's okay if it starts there. And now we'll just move right on to the W, which again, I'll do this as one object. And again, and we're just gonna put down our points there. Start there is fine. Let's have it stop right. Oh, I put the start point in the wrong spot. So <laughs> we'll put the stop point right Believe. It. Right below it, we'll come in and we'll do our node edit tool. And now we can move our start point back up over here because we, that's where we actually want it. You can see how it put a really long jump stitch in there. So this software will do that. You need to make sure that you're cognizant of where your start and stop points are because it'll try and bridge them as it goes around. So now we'll just move right back into our tool here and we'll come up and around. Um, I am using right click to put in curved nodes in the software. It also does it if you hold down the control key, it'll put in a curved node. I'm not as big a fan as that. I kind of like it to be um, right click, but it does that. So um, I, I did go in and I manually changed that so that that didn't happen. Uh, now I'm going to start right about here and we'll come around our points this way. And knowing that these stitches are gonna pull up a little bit and those ones are gonna push out is what's dictating where we're gonna put those. So I'm gonna go ahead and start button. Fine with it starting right there. I do want it to stop right here because I just wanna jump over. There's not a huge gap between those two letters. Um, I think it's beneficial to go ahead and jump across them. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll come over right there, there. 
and then we'll come up. Um, the space bar is the pan key, so I hit that to be able to come up. And you can see there that I held down the control key and I put in a node that I don't want. So we go into our node edit and we will change that to maybe. <laughs> Let's see if I can remember how to change nodes here. Oh, we need to move that out of the way. Now we can go into the node and we can turn it into a cusp node and we'll bring it pointing up there and hit enter so that we can update our stitch path. And now I want to make sure that I change that stitch angle again, hit enter. And now our stop point, I do want to bring it down just a little bit. I don't want it to finish all the way up. So our stop point is going to be there. And I'm going to come into the commands here. I'm going to make sure that my tie off is in a line because I want it to drop back in on the line. And then I'm going to put my end command as a trim and I'll hit apply. And it's going to set those changes in there. So now I know when I start sewing here, I think, or over here, it's going to come across and I'm going to have my tie in there and I'm coming over here and it's going to tie out there and I know it's going to tie out and I don't have to worry about that. So um, when you're doing, when you're sewing actually, and I'm going to tell you why the tie ins and tie outs are kind of important. Um, if you're stitching like a letter and you don't put a tie in, a lot of times what'll happen is it'll hit and it'll start, it'll just start running down the letter and the thread will actually, because there's nothing there to anchor it when it gets started, the thread will actually pull out of the needle. And so it can, you, it can make you think that you have tension problems when in all, in all actual, actuality, my words are not working right today, when in all actuality it's not tension, it is missing a tie-in in the file. So it's one of those things that you can do to a file that will make people think that it's tension on, there's something wrong with their machine, but it's not necessarily wrong with their machine. So we're gonna keep on moving around here as we're going along. And I'm just kind of using these points as I go around to um, digitize basically manually. Uh, we're just redoing the text uh, to make it conform just a little bit better. And I am going to cut the base of that little, that S off a little bit. I'm going to make sure, okay, I've got my tie in. We're going to put my tie in a little bit down here and I'm going to put a, my tie off up here because I'm just going to jump into that. And we'll go in here and we will go into our commands and we will make sure that we have our tie in and we'll go ahead and do the triangle there and hit apply. So now we have that applied there. It's going to tie in, come around, do that letter. And we're just going to move right into the next word here. So um, we have Ron here. Hi from Oklahoma. What program is that? Hatch. This is not Hatch. This is Recoma's uh, Chroma software that we're using. And Letty here says he needs a discount on the new tool. <laughs> uh, I think we all need discounts on new tools. Justin's not here, so I can't give him that much of a hard time. But we'll go ahead and we'll come in here and we're going to do the apostrophe. And these are all so close together that I would um, I would just put in a little run stitch. I'm not overly worried about the uh, the distance in there because it is so close. Your eye is going to fill in what you're, you want to see and you're going to see the letters. So I set my start point there, my stop point there. You can see that they're just a little bit off here from the S, this one. So I'm going to move that stop point just a little bit. We'll move it down just a little bit there. Oh, that's a little further than I wanted it to go. It doesn't want to do where I want it. So let's check our start point here. We'll move that up just a little bit. And that we just, I'm just trying to minimize that little jump stitch is all I'm trying to do. So now we've got that. I'm going to come back in here into my classic satin tool and I'm going to come across and we'll come down here. And again, I'm going to come out. We're going to do another stitch, one in the middle there. And we'll come there and I'll come across the bottom here. And I'm actually going to come out to what the full length of that would be without the, um, there goes my mind not working again <laughs> without the push compensation. There we go. And now I'm going to come across here and I'm just going to come up and we'll hit enter. I'm going to make sure that my text starts there. It's roughly in the same area as where my stop point is. And I will set my stop point right there for that letter. And now we're going to come in and do the E. So this is what a lot of digitizing is, um, is coming around and just setting points. So, 
we're going to get around this letter and then we've got a few more to go. <laughs> I'm hoping I can keep it under a half hour here. Uh, I would be a little bit, I'd, I'd be a little bit faster if I was working in Wellcom um, just because I'm a little bit faster in that software to begin with. So I'm going to set my start point there. I'll put my end point right there and we'll come and do this N, come up there. Now these letters may look like they're touching and some of them will probably sew out so that they are touching just a little bit, but it will, uh, because of the pull that's going to happen, I'm a little less concerned with that because as these letters here pull in, then these ones are going to be start put down and they should have a little bit of a gap in between them uh, as we go around. So we'll go ahead and, and I could push, I could push those up just a little bit further if I wanted to. It all comes down to stylistic choices. Um, a lot of this is, how we interpret the art and this is how I interpret these letters. So uh, making sure that it's there and I'm actually gonna have it end up here and I'm gonna pull up a question here. Martin says, Jeff, what is your stitch density here? We're sitting at a 0.35 and I might actually open that up because it is small, smaller letter. I might bump it up to a 0.4 maybe um, and we'll see. So uh, Ramona satin stitch, like when you pull on the laces on your runners, yep. So we've got that kind of accounted for and we'll come in here and I do want to make sure that I'm paying attention again to all my start points and all my stop points because I want to make sure that I'm getting all of the, I'm, I'm using as, as few jumps as I can to get around. So I'm going to put my start point there and I'll put my stop point right there. You can see here how we have a little bit of stitch sticking above that's that push compensation so it's adding the push compensation onto the satin and not the stitching underneath which would be the the underlay and the travel which can make those stitch at stick out a little bit based off of your inset values so that is why we see those little bits there sticking out and we'll come across the top here and i'll end it right there we're going to make sure that our start and stop points are fairly close and I'll put that one right there and I'll come across here. So I do like to save my, um, like my dots for eyes. I don't like to run those um, right away, right after the eye. I like to finish out the word. So we're gonna finish off this P and then we'll come back and we'll catch that little bit and then we'll move around to the other, um, the other lettering as we go. So we're gonna get a couple of our nodes in there and look at that. And I want it to come out just a little bit more there. So we're going to back up a couple of nodes and we'll keep coming out here. And there we go. And up and we'll go there. And I'm, I'm going to throw that out just a little bit wider there. Come down and down. And I want my start point to be roughly right there. I am going to bring my stop point up a couple of stitches. And because this is the last object here, I am going to put a... Uh, a tie off on it. And actually I'm looking at this now and I'm looking at that. I'm going to just go ahead and we're going to just chain this little dot in there. So let's go into our node edit and we're going to pull that up to right there. We'll hit enter because we need to hit enter to update the stitch path. And now we're going to digitize that little dot as it goes right there. So we'll go there and there. And I'm going to come up just a little bit more here uh, for that dot. And I'm going to make sure that my start point is there and my end point is right there. And now I need to make sure that I go in here and I set my commands there that we do our tie off, which I'm going to do a line and my end command is going to be a trim. I want to make sure that I put that in there too. Now I've applied that. It's going to apply it to those settings. And now we can move eventually. There we go. It just didn't want to grab there. So I'm going to come across here and we're going to start um, again. We're going to come over here and we're going to start on this S as we go around. So if you guys have any questions at all, make sure you drop them there in the comments. Uh, I am monitoring the comments. Yep, I'm down to the bottom of them. And uh, I want to make sure that I catch all your questions if you have them. And again, this is how I would fix this problem. There's, um, you know, it, it's, it's all interpretation and everybody interprets things just a little bit differently. Um, which is kind of neat because we were talking about it last time, 
how uh, digitizers kind of have their own signature style and you can actually see that when they digitize. So um, it's kind of neat. I'm gonna cut this off just a little bit short. I'm gonna tie in there and I'm gonna make sure I tie off right there and we'll just continue on the letter. And we come around there to the bottom, there to the bottom, and there, and I'll come right there. I'm making sure I'm touching those two points. I'm okay with that jump stitch. It's going to happen right there um, because it's going to be covered. And now we're going to be doing this R. And this R is going to be handled differently than the previous one because we are going in the opposite direction. So we'll go there. I, mean, I want to make sure that I start it there. And I'm going to stop it right about right there. And I'm actually going to come in here and we're going to digitize this little kick out here, starting a little bit further into that letter. So I'm going to start that there and I'm going to put my stop point down here and we'll go right into the V. Because this is such a small letter, I'm just going to come across the bottom and come right back up here and not do it as more than one object because it doesn't really need to be. I'll set my start point there, my stop point there, and we'll go down here. And we'll cut right there and there. My start point's gonna be there, which is fine. My stop point, I'm gonna put it right there. And now I'm gonna digitize this C. And I just keep looking over there to make sure that I'm catching all of the comments as they come. And so far I haven't seen any more. We'll come around here and there. And we'll end that one right there. And my start point, I want to put it over here. My stop point, I want to put it right there. And we'll come around and do this one here. So I want to make sure that I'm putting my um, nodes that are going to be my start and my stop points. I want to make sure that I'm putting those close enough together that if it does jump, which it will, um, so I guess when it jumps, I'm not going to have to worry about that getting bumped outside of the satin stitch when the satin stitch comes over to cover them. So and right there i'm going to set my start point there and my end point is going to come down just a little bit and we're going to put a trim on this object here in the commands tab tie off is going to be a line and our trim is going to be an end can end command here we're going to hit apply and that's going to apply it so now we have a, a question or a comment here so martin says i know i know but the horizontal leg of the l in lawn should be on the same line as the other square letters Let's back up a little bit here. And <laughs> I'll take it. So on the stitch out, whoop, wrong button there. On the stitch out that I did, it is not, uh, but we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll fix it in this one here. Um, Cause why not? Let's make sure we grab that one. There we go. And we'll go in here and grab our nodes. So I need to move that out of the way. Oh, I moved it too far. We need to come back there and there and grab that node. And now that I've got both of them there, they can come down just a little bit there and there. And now I can move my start point back over that stitch angle there that stitch angle back there and hit the enter key. And I might've moved it too far. <laughs> I'll take it though. So we'll come over. We might come back to that letter. We might come back. Um, because I stopped there, I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna grab this upper piece right here. And we did go up a little bit further on the other one. And I don't wanna use that. I prefer the classic satin tool myself. There are advantages and disadvantages to using the other one, but we want to come up about 0.4 because that's what our pull comp is. And start and end point are fine. We're going to make sure that we, we set those commands in here so that it definitely happens. Um, we're going to do our tie-in as a line. That's fine. Our tie-in can be off, and our end command is going to be a trim. And we'll hit apply, so now it's going to do that letter, and then it's going to come over here and do the and here. So uh, let's go ahead and... We'll digitize that. I'm going to digitize it just as it looks here. Um, we'll come around there. I'm going to add a little bit into that stitch angle as we come around. And we're going to come right up the top here. And we're just going to move right back over the top. I'm going to throw it a little bit wider right here um, just by eye. It's not. <laughs> 
Oh, you know, it's, it, uh, I'll bring that comment up here so that you guys can see it. Uh, it definitely made me smile. And we'll go right there and I'll hit enter and my start, I'll put it actually, yeah, that'll be fine. And I'm going to move my stop back up just a little bit. And that definitely didn't go how I wanted to. But Martin says, I'm sorry, just an issue that makes me crazy. That's okay. We all have those those things that drive us nuts. So you can see how we have this interesting run stitch that it decided to put over. That is due to our stop point. It didn't apply it to the area that I really wanted it to. And it actually put it on this underneath. So it put a travel stitch back there to attack that. And we didn't want that. Um, so we just had to go in and change that. I'm gonna do a triangle tie in and a line. And my end command again is gonna be a trim. And I'm gonna hit apply. And now that's applied there. We'll go ahead and do our M. And we're almost done with the text and it's only 41 minutes. So I need to pick it up just a little bit. <laughs> All right. So we'll come here, there, come up there and there, back down there and there, up there and there and down again there and there. We'll hit enter. My start point is fine right there. My end point is going to be right there. And there we go. I'm going to make sure that my command on that one, let's select it before I just go changing commands here. And we're going to make sure that we just have our tie in there. And we'll do a triangle, hit apply. There, we're good. And we'll move on to the O here. And we'll move around the lettering here. And this, this I might stretch these out just a little bit wider. Um, it all depends. We'll see. Considering I've already sewn it out. <laughs> Any changes I make at this point are just going to be because they're little things that bug me, but I've already sewn it out. So come up here. There we go. And one of the things that we could do in this instance is rather than digitize that itself, we could um, just copy and paste the letter, but I'm going to digitize it um, just because I'm here and I'm in a groove. So, yep, creative license. So Martin said creative license for those that are on YouTube and can't see the Facebook comments. So <laughs> there we go. Um, and I put that in the wrong spot. Let's put that down there too. And we'll go in here and we'll grab it and we'll pull the node here. And then I've got a question and we'll address that here as we move on to the last letter. So uh, Michael Ortiz says, the reason for the letters being a little uneven is because of the push and pull, right? Yep. So we know that when it's a horizontal satin along the axis here like this, it's gonna pull in a little bit. It's actually gonna pull in right to about right there. And then these ends here, because they're open end satins, they're gonna push out and it's all gonna kind of balance out right there in the middle. And um, there's a, there can always be a little bit of tweaking after the fact, uh, after you run it on your ideal fabric. But these are the settings and the distances that I use uh, when I digitize, um, mainly because that's, from my experience, that's what works. So um, it, it falls down to that uh, create, test, <laughs> edit, test, edit, smile leader eventually. I mean, there we go. So I'm going to put my start point right there. I'm going to put my tie out right there and we're going to add a tie off onto the command. So we'll get into the commands here. We'll set the tie off as a line and our end command as a trim. And hit apply. So when you get a file back from your digitizer um, and it has smaller text, you'll notice that the letters don't seem to line up and that's because they're manually compensating for pull that's going to happen, um, push and pull that's going to happen in the embroidery. And so that's why they make those uh, decisions to do that. Um, usually if it looks good on screen, it's not going to sew out very well. And if it looks bad on screen, then it's probably going to look pretty good on your, uh, on your garment. So I'm going to run a uh, run stitch right here. And really what I'm doing with this run stitch is I'm adding, um, it's just a start stitch that I'm going to do to tie in and move around just a little bit. It's nothing crazy. Um, it's just going to be there to kind of stitch, travel, and tack things down. I'm going to set my tie into a triangle. I'm not going to put an end command because I'm going to go right into it. 
and we'll jump right here into our classic satin tool. And I, when I do leaves, I like to do them this way. Um, and I'll come down to about right there. My start point is going to be right there. My stop point will be right there. And then I'll come to my run tool and I'll jump from there to there. And I'll do the same thing. My start point, my end point. And then I will digitize with the class, classic satin tool coming in just a little bit there. And my start and my stop point. And now I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to overlap these just a little bit. Um, I'm going to get that line in there. It's not going to be as defined but it should be enough that um, that you'll see a difference. So I'm going to set my start point there, my end point right there. And now I'm going to come across, and this is basically like capping the top of an A, how I'm going to handle this point right here. So we'll come there. I'm going to hit my enter button. My start point is going to be right there. My stop point is going to be right there. And now I'm going to come down this side, and I'm going to make sure that I overlap enough because I don't want these two pulling apart. And we'll get to right there. I'll hit enter, start there, stop there. We're going to make sure that we add in our tie-in here. So we'll go to commands. We'll do our end command as a trim and our tie off, I should say, in as a line. Just checking the time here, making sure. So Michael says, thanks. I always wondered about this and thought the digitizers used auto digitize or something. No, nope, that's... Um, it's manually compensating for that pull that's going to happen. So now, because I'm working my way from the center out and the bottom up, so we've done that object. Now I'm going to come around and I'm going to do this little piece here, this little piece here, and work my way up there. So again, I'm going to do that with a run stitch. I'm going to tie in here. I'll come down and around here, and I'll actually come right there. And I want to make sure that I have a tie in on that. So I'm going to make sure that I have a command of tie in with a triangle should be sufficient enough. And let's grab our satin tool. Oh, nope, not that key. There we go. <laughs> Had to make sure I took that off. So I'll come in down here and I'll move down just a little bit on the inside. Start there, stop there, that's fine. We'll come here and I'm gonna do this portion like that, I'm gonna start there and I'm gonna end right here. And I just messed that up. So we'll go in and fix it, go into node edit, pull that over there, hit enter to make sure that I update it. There we go, and we'll continue moving on. So I'll come down just a couple of threads is all, and we'll come up and around to this point here. And I wanna make sure that I'm getting plenty of loft out of that. I'm gonna set my start point there my end point up there and I'm going to come up here and we'll do this like that. My start point is going to be there. My end point is again going to be right there and I'll come this way here just a little bit. And that should be, we'll go a little bit more right there. I'm going to put my start point there. My stop point there is fine. And then we'll come this way here. We'll move around here and we'll get right here. There, my start point, I need to make sure I move it down here close. My end point is gonna be right there. And now I will add this little bit here. And I'm gonna come just a little bit further there. I'll put my start point right there. My stop point right there is fine. And now I'm gonna come again and we'll move right down this stem here and I'm watching on the bottom of the screen uh, bottom left where you guys are it shows me the um, the stitch length so that's what I'm watching as I'm moving along there now we've got that I'm going to make sure that my end command here is going to be a line I'll hit apply and now that's been applied there and we can move on to the upper part of the P, double check in here. We've got about 10 minutes left, so I think we're doing okay. I like to delete the lower piece um, as I digitize over it. So I'm gonna take these two pieces out. And so now we're left with uh, what we've digitized and then again, coming into the P here. So let's come right there. I'll grab my classic satin because I like 
to do satin stitches here on lettering, um, particularly lettering. And I'll come across there and we'll come up. Now this is gonna be, that's about eight millimeters right there. I'm gonna open this up just a little bit here and I'm gonna come up into this letter. And right there is eh, 7.8 is what it's telling me. We'll go ahead and believe it there. So I'm gonna do my start point and my end point there. And now I'm gonna come this direction. And there, and there, 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 and there. And I'm just trying to make sure I'm catching comments. If I don't catch your comment, I'm very, very sorry. Um, I'm trying. <laughs> it's usually a little bit easier when I've got another person here. Um, but that's where we're at today. So this is six point. I don't know if I believe that. It's telling me things. I don't know if I believe it. We'll find out later. We'll come there, 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 and we'll end right there. I want to make sure that my start point's right there. I want to move my stop point in just a little bit. You can see it's doing some short stitches, which is fine. I need to make sure that in my tie off is going to be a line. My end command is going to be a trim. I'm going to hit apply here. It's going to do that. And now I'm going to do, go here. And again, I'm going to make my tie in is going to be a triangle. My start command and end command are fine. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now we've got that underlaying there. Um, we'll back it out just a little bit so that you guys can see what we're left with here. So I do want to make sure that I grab this underlying. We'll, we'll get rid of that because it's fighting me at the moment. I do want to make sure I grab that and that I did get the, I did get the tie in command there. So now we've got that. Um, now when this will sew, it'll sew again from the center out, uh, it'll go center left and then, uh, from the N to the P and then from the S to the E, and then it'll move up into the leaves as we go along. So let's go ahead and watch a slow redraw on this. And we walked up and we did the N. Now we're doing the W and we'll come across and get the A and the L, which I still think that bottom piece is just a little too thin, just a little bit. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to bump that up just a little bit, but we, we'll do that later. Uh, when you guys aren't sitting here watching me do it. <laughs> so we're going to get that and the P. And now we're going to do the S. So whenever I do a file, uh, I always like to test it on something. And typically, um, typically it's on a flat, 100% honest. And so I look at that, I see it. Uh, and I, what I really look for are like glaring issues, especially here. And again, when I run it on a flat, like if it's adding any trims on file export that I need to address, my underlay is correct. It's sewing in the order that I want it to. Those are all things that I come back and look at to make sure that they are correct. So we're coming again. We're going to move up there. We're going to go up and around the leaf. And we'll come back down there, get that little offshoot. We'll turn the corner just a little bit and then we'll come up and we'll do that larger P. And there you have it. So um, that's how I would address those issues that we saw um, in the initial picture. And again, I shouldn't have closed it, but <laughs> sometimes I don't think correctly. And we'll go ahead and blow me up here full screen. So um, this is the result. And yay, it's horrible. My, my camera doesn't want to focus. So I stitched this out on my machine. Um, and that's the sell out that I got. Running those changes, you can see it's a lot closer coming across that baseline um, than it was before. There we go. And we've given a little bit more of the lettery look on the P as well as the leaf. Um, when it comes to elements like that, I do like to carve them up and uh, give it just a little bit more dimension, not necessarily 
a ton, but I do like to just cut it up just a little bit. So um, hopefully that helps you guys out. Uh, if you have any questions, you can drop them in there. You can always ask them in the embroidery nerd group. If you are not in the embroidery nerd group, feel free to join. Make sure that you answer all of the questions. If you don't answer all of the questions, that's how we screen. So if you don't answer all of them, you won't get in. We don't block. So um, if you go there and you've answered the questions once before and you didn't answer all of them, you know, check back in another day. You can re-request to come back in and make sure you answer all those questions and we'll let you in. So we'll go ahead and do um, some coming up stuff. And this is breaking because I haven't actually changed it in the software yet. And that's on my list of stuff to do tonight. But um, due to my error, uh, we're going to have to move the um, the webinar that's going to be done by Lee Caricelli. We're going to have to move it from this Saturday to the 31st. Um, if you've already paid for that and that doesn't work for you, reach out to me and I can refund you uh, if you need be. But we are going to be moving that um, it'll be on the same time. We're just moving it one week away. So that is, I'm going to be ending up sending a uh, email out here to those that have registered. If you haven't registered, you can feel free to uh, check it out. Uh, Lee did a really great first class and I'm looking forward to the second one. And again, that'll be on the 31st. So we have that coming up this week and some of the people are already there. There's the applicate getaway uh, in Texas. They're still accepting. Uh, you can buy virtual uh access to the virtual classes. I highly recommend those as well. Um, and those are the things that we have coming up. Uh, Fort Worth Impressions, well, I'll be there. Me, Justin, Jerry Lee, and myself. Uh, Miss Ramona McKee will be there. Eric Campbell will be there. It should be a lot of fun. So if you can make it to the Impressions Expo coming up uh, in September, I highly recommend that as well. So um, we'll come down here and we've got Martin saying, once again, great class. I really appreciate it. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, Sedona, thank you for sharing. Thank you for hanging out with me. And Kevin, thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Kevin. I'm wearing the design. Kevin designed this, uh, that side. He designed this, uh, this logo, and I really like it. So, um, with that, you guys, I'd like to thank you for hanging out with me. And, uh, again, you guys have a great night.